okay it's okay 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 so dear friend once again very very lots of thanks very very good morning good afternoon and uh, once again we try to understand some physics together and actually uh, today's lecture is mainly motivated and is based on a question that sara asked me after our third lecture last time and that made me think and i tried to work on this and i think i will take almost full lecture just answering that but it's a, it's a very very fundamental question that she asked it's a very very beautiful wonderful and very fundamental question so her question concerns the construction of higher energy states construction of higher fock states construction of fock states construction of n particle states all all these things are equivalent okay and i think it's uh, important in the sense that without knowing this we really we really do not uh, we really do not know what is going on so uh, sara wanted to know uh, a few things which are answered uh, after uh, which requires an understanding of the so called fock state and <coughs> the 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 theory uh, for this was developed by none other than paul mor stirrat for bosons in particular and by people like wigner and jordan for the fermions and uh, it's named named or it's uh, it's known by the name of the russian physicist vladimir fock so fock space and we will gradually know uh, what it is so uh, this is this is about uh, half a century old story uh, then quantum field theory was getting developed at the hands of these people like uh, dirac uh, jordan bigner and many others okay uh, string theory was not born there at that time at all nobody knew the name of a string theory at that time so it was the quantum field theory was growing and was being developed and the fundamental rule so actually th that is the basic and whatever is applicable to field theory is suitable generalization is directly applicable to string theory and to super string theory also so <coughs> uh, let me first try to try to try to uh, uh, address this question uh, you might recollect that once in a while i make this statement statement or i might have made this statement that in quantum theory we have the possibility of creating energy out of vacuum okay which is not empty but is a soup of boiling particles being created and destroyed uh, it's it's a very very popular statement that i also like to make and many others also like to make but it has deep physics and actually our today's lecture will be based only in explaining this how you do it what it is and how should one attack it how should one address it so <coughs> and this thing is applicable right from quantum mechanics to quantum field theory to all kinds of quantum field theories involving scalar real scalar field complex scalar field vector field dirac spinner field and so on everywhere it's applicable and it's also equally applicable to string theory which by that i mean bosonic string theory as well as to super string theory okay so construction of fock states what is a fock state we try to see this is a n particle state
So, this is a this is a general notation of the n particle state uh, where you have n k1 particles with momentum k1 n k2 particles with momentum k2 n k3 particles with momentum k3 and so on n k i particles with momentum k i <coughs> and then so we would define a number operator n k i which operates on n k 1, n k 2, n k i equals to n k i, n k 1, n k 2, I will make things much much simpler in a few minutes. Okay, so so don't be afraid of what is looking here. Uh, I I could write it for short and in that would be the that would be an expression in just quantum mechanics. This would be an expression in field theory, but they mean the same. So this is a uh, this is a n particle state. And this is the number operator n, where n we would define as the product of a dagger and a, where a dagger is the creation operator and a is the annihilation operator. I, I'll come back to the simplest example, one dimensional harmonic oscillator in quantum mechanics. Okay. But just to give you, so let me let me uh, not write those two little more complicated looking steps. Let me already come to the simplest of the things. So, Let me start with a very simple example, one dimensional harmonic oscillator in quantum mechanics and we will see how it is being used all the way in string theory. So, I would be random in my description from quantum mechanics, I could go to field theory or to string theory, but I would explain each and every statement, each and every thing that I write or I speak, okay. If you do not understand, please do interrupt me and ask me, okay. So, <coughs> let me consider one dimensional harmonic oscillator, things would look much simpler, okay? And they would hold true with very, very minor generalizations to field theory and to string theory. So let me write down the Lagrangian one half m x dot square minus one half m omega square x square. So I am just writing the Lagrangian for a one dimensional harmonic oscillator, which is this, which has this parabolic potential, these are just constants. So, uh, you, can, you can plot you can plot the potential, this would be the potential P equal to x square, okay. This is the x, very well known harmonic oscillator potential or the parabolic potential. If you plot it, V on this side and uh, v equal to x square, okay. So you have this, and these are kinetic in one dimension, okay. All right. Now I follow the 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 n particle state description or the Fock state description. It's useful in the so-called second quantization. So if we talk about second quantization, we also need to know what is first quantization. So what is <coughs> first quantization? You start whether if you are working in classical mechanics and going to quantum mechanics 
or if you are considering field theory and going to so classical field theory and you are going to quantum field theory so the first step is you calculate all the all the momenta so for example p would be one half into two into m into f dot m f dot this would give me x dot equal to p and m and with this i can go back to the so called Heisenberg transformation sigma p r t y dot minus l this would be p x dot minus l minus one half and x dot is square minus one half and where x square x is square and this you can rearrange this will so be p square by 2m plus the so you obtain the expression for the hamiltonian but right now we are working in classical mechanics classical theory everything here is classical and in classical physics we also follow mr dera and what we do we calculate the quasar brackets in all the phase space variables of the theory there are only two phase space variables for this theory x and p okay so, <coughs> so quasar bracket is 